Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Connect to Florida. I hope you're having an awesome day wherever you are. We are certainly having a great, beautiful day here in Southwest Florida. I promised you that I would be doing an update every Sunday as we navigate things in this ever-changing real estate market in Florida. So I'm gonna give you a quick update of everything that happened this past week or so in the real estate world. I've been putting out a lot more videos lately, we're talking about a lot of things, so let's jump into what last week looked like. All right, now before we get into it, I just want to introduce myself. If you're new to the channel, my name is Barrett Pastor, and I've been a real estate broker for over 25 years. So hopefully I'm coming to you from a place of knowledge and experience, and I can help you understand all of this moving terrain, moving water that we call Florida. All right, so the first big story I want to talk to you about is State Farm, the insurance company State Farm. So even though, even though they bailed out of Florida, even though many of the big real estate companies have bailed out of Florida, we have read the report, we have seen it's been made public that State Farm, although they left many people high and dry or underwater, they have decided to bail out of Florida with a profit but they're still leaving. So I don't know, listen, this is a little hard to take. When they tell us that they're going broke and they can't insure us and the big companies are leaving Florida. You know, if you didn't know this, one of the things that's always strange to people when they're on their first rodeo of buying a house in Florida, they never understand why the big insurance companies aren't here, but they're not. I mean, pretty much every single one of them has left or they're here but barely, like they're on the banana peel and they're getting ready to leave. So the problem with that is that you're insuring with like Acme Insurance Company and you don't know if they're gonna pay out, you don't know if they're gonna become insolvent, you don't know what's gonna happen with them, you don't know if they're gonna be there for you when you need them. So that's problematic, but then also for people that are moving to Florida and making it their home residence, so if you're going to become a resident of the state and you're going to change over other things like your cars and maybe you have a boat, something along those lines, you can't bundle anything because you don't have the ability to do that, which a lot of people don't like that either. They don't want to have multiple insurance companies that are taking care of different things because it just gets to be a lot to track and confusing. So we had that happen last week. And then also all kinds of chatter. Although there are so many mortgage brokers, real estate agents, anybody in that industry. And listen, those, those are my brothers and sisters. I am in the same industry. But, you know, as I say on this channel, truth is truth. And that whole, you know, marry the house, date the rate, silliness, ridiculousness. I don't even know what that is, what that means. All of that. Basically, what they were saying is buy the house now with this high interest rate because don't worry about it. There's no way that these rates are going to stay up. So go get the house that you want without competition. And then in six months, we'll do a refinance for you because we are 100% sure that the rates are going to go down. Well, guess what? They're not. It does not look like they're going to go down. It looks like at best, they're going to stay put. So, you know, that is not good news for people who followed that whole date the rate, buy the house, marry the house, whatever. That's not, that's not going to work out for them because if you did that, if you, if you punted, so to speak, the ball's still in the air. And then to add insult to injury, there's the whole rumor that rates are going to stay high for a while. Remember back when, like about three months ago, when you were hearing all over your social media feeds from everybody in the real estate community, everybody in the mortgage industry, remember how you were hearing that rates were going to go down in the last quarter of 2024? Well, now we're hearing, well, or maybe not, if ever, so anybody who went along with that whole date the rate thing, I'm really worried about them. Because if you locked in at say 8% or 
upper sevens, but you did it thinking that you were only going to have to carry that payment for six months. And, you know, when you close on your home, you generally skip that first month payment just because of how things get amortized out. And you thought, okay, I can hang on for four or five payments. That's not a big deal. And then nothing you were told happens. That's a problem. And of course, more homes on the market. So let me tell you the counties that saw the most homes on market last week. So according to all the data that I gathered everywhere that I can grab data from, National Association of Realtors, everywhere I could pull from the MLS, so the counties that saw the biggest increases last week were Lee County, which if you're unfamiliar, Lee County is going to be Fort Myers, Cape Coral. You know, I did a video on Cape Coral. I'll link it below if you're interested. But I named that as one of the cities that you might be tempted to move into if you don't have all the information that you need. But Lee County, you're talking about Bonita Springs, Estero, Fort Myers, Cape Coral. It's a big county. It's a big county. And they had an enormous increase on homes on the market. Homes, condos, everything. All real estate. So Lee County, Orange County, which is going to be the Orlando area all around Disney. Huge increase there. And then Dade County. Dade County, which is going to be Miami, that continues to just be, that's number one. So in order of how these added up, although Orange County and Lee County were very, very close, Dade County was number one, number two was Lee County, and number three was Orange County. Now, as an honorable mention, I do want to mention that Collier County, oh my gosh. Now, Collier County is going to be Naples. Collier County, last month, 67% increase in homes on the market. In the 26 years that I've been doing real estate, I don't think I've ever seen that. 67%. Unbelievable. So listen, when I tell you, I, I had some people tell me that I was crazy for telling them that now might be the time that the sun, the moon, and the stars line up for you to get off the fence and buy something. And I listed, when I did that video, I listed out all the reasons that I felt like now was really starting to inch towards time to go. So the reason for that is in part the abundance of homes that are on the market. Anytime you have all the turmoil and the unrest going on in the real estate community right now, sometimes as a buyer, you can work that to your advantage. Now, I am not saying that's in every single county or even every single neighborhood or community in a particular county. So for example, let's talk about Naples Park. Naples Park is a community in North Naples. It is not gated. It's very popular because you can VRBO. You can do those daily, nightly, weekly rentals. And a lot of investors bought in there. A lot of investors took houses down, scraped them, and put up big multi-million dollar homes. It's very close to the Gulf of Mexico. If you're familiar, Vanderbilt Beach is very close. So many of those, you could easily ride a bike to the beach anywhere in Naples Park. And in much of the area, you can walk. So locationally, it's really good. Now they have some issues in there. They have some flooding issues. Of course, they're west of 41. But generally speaking, that has been one of the more affordable parts of Naples that you could get close to the beach and not be in a super strict HOA so that you could live a little, rent a little, you know, kind of a little bit more breathing room to do what you want to do. Right now, as of the filming of this video, there are 181 homes on the market, single family homes in Naples Park. Now that's going to equal about 23% of the homes for sale in an area that you can walk to the beach, that you can bike to the beach with no HOA in Naples? Completely unheard of. Now, why is that happening? What is the phenomenon going on there? Well, I will tell you what it is. It is the fact that those folks that live there need flood insurance and they can't get it. They're having a heck of a time getting it because that area does flood. 
everyone knows it, especially the insurance companies. Also, you have a lot of older homes there. There's a lot of homes that are original to the area. Many years ago, Naples Park used to be the area that your mechanics and your hairdressers and your folks that worked at the retail stores, your folks that worked at Publix, those homes, and when I say many years ago, I'm really only talking about maybe 20. Those homes could be bought in the 150, right in that range. They were very affordable and very close to the beach. More than once, that area, that big block, was cited to be purchased by developers where they wanted to just take all the homes down and turn it into sort of like a Mercado. If you're familiar with North Naples, Mercado is a really popular place where there's shopping and restaurants and there's a Whole Foods there. And anyway, they couldn't get it approved. But that area is very, very desirable in terms of location for the beach. But those houses are still there and there are folks there that have hung on and made it through every storm, every flood, whatever it may be. They even have sewer issues there. So those folks might have roofs that are 20 years old. Maybe they don't feel those roofs need to be replaced, but the insurance companies are saying, we're not gonna cover you. So there is a big problem going on there. Now, even for an investor that is willing to go in, if you can't insure the property, then if you're the seller of that home, who is your buyer? Because most buyers that close to the water are not gonna take the chance. Even though the prices have adjusted down, simple little home that needs work, maybe has an older roof, needs aesthetics, something along those lines is still gonna be around $600,000, $700,000. So that is a lot of money to gamble with if you can't get insurance. So they have a real serious crisis in Naples Park. So Dade, Orange, and Lee, those are the ones taking the big hit right now. Last week was terrible for them. And Lee County, most of the homes that came on the market, it was almost predominantly the cause of them leaning into that three county category um, was Cape Coral. Cape Coral is just, it is inundated with homes on the market. So again, if you're targeting Cape Coral, that could be the place for you to do a little bit of looking. If you watched my video and you're okay with all those problems that are going on in Cape Coral. So that's my quick little Sunday update for this past week. And I will see you on Wednesday for another video.